Michael Moore, a longtime bull in the China markets for I don't know how many iterations on the shows that we did here and on a, our talk show, Asia Confidential, says this could be a buying opportunity. But it's kind of like half dozen, one sixth of the other. Read it as you may. You give a set. It's like a Rorschach test, isn't mm -hmm. it? Everybody's going to interpret where we are on the moving average in a different way. Well, here's the deal. On 200-day moving averages, they're important because people think they're important. <laughs> Many, when they talk about it in the news. Everyone looks at it. Okay. Everyone, everyone looks at 50. Everyone looks at 200. Uh -huh. As I mentioned in my piece today, we have uh, six major markets in the world that are all, every one of them, right on their 200-day moving averages. U.S., U.K., Euro stocks, Japan, or rather, China. Uh, Korea and Taiwan. Every mm -hmm. one of them is right now with their 200-day moving averages. People are very focused on technicals right now. Mm -hmm. uh, fundamentals are being thrown out the window, even though we think the fundamentals in China, of those six countries I just mentioned, yeah. Far and away, the fundamentals in China are better than any of those six countries. Okay, uh, so you are you're still a consummate bull. Then you yes. don't read this the wrong way. You don't. I mean, even you write that you know uh, the, the 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 next few days are very very important. Yes. If we don't hold these levels, we could fall off the cliff a little bit. But then, what? How do you translate that? And that means, oh, great! I hope it does that because if they're even cheaper, and then we can snap up bigger board lots of all this stuff. Well, we have to deal with uh, fundamentals and we deal with technicals. The fundamentals in China are better than any of the six countries I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Technicals are such that if we bounce off these 200-day moving averages, we could get a, a, a big rally. The next two to three days are very important. The fundamentals in China, though, point to the negative in many ways. I mean, you're getting warnings. You're getting clarion calls from the central bank. There's already talk that they've already lent more in the first couple of weeks than they were supposed to do in all of 2010, if you believe the parameters of the people who have oversight on the banks. They're there seems to be this very, very hardcore concern, concern that things have completely gotten out of whack and they're way behind the curve on controlling uh, what may be spiraling inflation down the line, something that might rear its head. Yes, no? Spiraling inflation, which is a whole zero. <laughs> uh, I you said know. down the road. <laughs> We're not at that fork yet. <laughs> PPI, which is minus five. Uh -huh. you know? so, so in that sense, uh, what, we look, what we're looking at here is, you're right, future expectations of, I think they're focusing on asset growth, not CPI or PPI. So, so in that sense, that's a very fair comment, that, that asset prices are a concern. China is trying to control the pace of lending. It is not trying to control the amount of lending. That mm -hmm. is what we are very clearly being given as a signal by the government. It is not the amount of, mm -hmm. of, of debt. It is the pace of debt. So, mm -hmm. so that's a very fair point, that they're trying to stretch this out and make this sustainable. Is that the right thing to do? Are they doing the right thing? Is the policy correct? Well, uh, the West is living on a world of targeting asset prices. China's living in a world of targeting uh, loan growth, and, and, and that's the prerogative. The problem is, uh, Bernie, is that if, if we're looking at, at uh, uh, loan growth, China's loan growth is uh, distributed uh, every year on average. About 70% of the, uh, of, of the credit is delivered in mm -hmm. the first half of the year. 50% right. uh, of it's delivered in the first quarter. This is hardly the ideal way to deliver credit. This is the system. Okay. We're going to talk this way. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to do something very novel on the program right after the break. You know what that is? You're going to beat me up. No. No, of course. I love you. <laughs> we are going to show people what a 200-day moving average line graphic looks like.